and say, you got the detour, it's only the locals go by there. It's not the regular people coming up from all different directions. But just take in consideration that the bad weather is coming, winter is coming, remember, lakes froze. Will the fence be put in place uh, before the, the dam project is officially complete? It's possible. It is definitely on the schedule. The items have been uh, purchased for the project, and it will it will be done as we have planned. Gotcha. What is going on with all the dilapidated homes in the township? There is houses that they just got to come down. They can just not, yes, they get in the tax money, but they don't care because they don't live next door to I got four houses on the road right now. One is nobody can live in there. They have to just go with the tractor and knock it down. The case is outside. I saw a township vehicle this afternoon tonight when I returned for, from the hospital because I'm a, I have a friend is under hospice. And I noted a little green car, I guess it was green or bluish, whatever, with the township thing in there. They were there. I don't know what they were doing there. It's 200 New Hampshire roads. Having nothing done, we're working on the seven year. Nobody want to live that way. I get up in the morning, this is the first thing I see. And it's not only my house. And, uh, I'm more aligned with the property. It's more than a hundred houses right now in PL. I walk every day that for those roads, and I see what is going on. I just want to get the least our administration. Think about it, the residents who live there. If I want to sell my house today, guess what? I will get sick. Why? The lapidated houses. Who want it? If I'm looking for a house, I'm going to see who, who's around the, the street or the community. That's giving us a bad impression in our community, and we are taxpayers. And we hoping all the residents there, there, the township can do something for us. Thank you, and good night. Have a nice holiday. And congratulations, the one got over the election because I've been very busy in the hospital. Thank you. Mr. Tam, and then the uh, gentleman in the back. I like that jacket, Mr. Tam. Pardon? I like your jacket. Your jacket? Thank I like you. it. Uh, you wear it well. Resolution 246. Could you tell me what funds are being transferred from what and where are they going? And how much? Uh, from departments, um, we have tax collector, code enforcement, buildings and grounds, recreation, I'm sorry, buildings and grounds, recreation, services, and senior uh, citizens, and others, other expenses, uh, will be transferred to uh, the zoning board, police department, streets and roads, municipal court, mm -hmm. um, and other expenses. Um, $284,000 will be transferred into those departments. That's a lot of money. Why isn't it going into surplus? Because you had a budget, you keep to the budget as close as possible. It sounds like there's a lot of departments, maybe the budget was padded ahead of time. And I got over a quarter million dollars and it's going to be dispersed into other departments. Maybe some of it is needed. But I think the majority of it should have gone to surplus for next year to ease the burden on the taxpayers. That's $284,000 um, out of a $24 million budget? Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, but every penny counts when people are paying taxes. And we needed that money to be transferred for a reason. Well, why wasn't this explained tonight instead of the way you're doing it? This is the reason, I mean, this is the way most of the transfers have occurred since Where? I've been on council. 
Have you all been to the meetings in other towns? Have you reviewed no. the no, minutes I have not, Mr. of Pembroke well. over the years? It wasn't done that way. Okay. It was explained to the public. It was a transparent government. You have no transparency right now. What you're doing to get out of here quick, and I agree with you, it's nice to get home early, but the point of the matter is people aren't finding out what's going on in government. And the only way they're going to find out is when there's discussion between the council, among the council people, and these things are brought out publicly. Mr. Tam, uh, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. However, um, we are not trying to get out here early. I've been in meetings um, this year with you where you have stood at the podium and spoke for a half an hour. When did I speak for a half hour? 25 minutes. Name I'm it. sorry, Mr. Tam. The last meeting you cut me off after about three minutes. Other people got up here for eight, nine minutes that night. No. No, that's total disrespect for the public and disregard. And as far as one get out here early, you shouldn't have run for office if you didn't have the mm -hmm. time. It thank takes you, time. Mr. Tam, thank you for your opinion yes. for saying that we, we want to get out of here early. Thank you for your opinion. All right. What about uh, this public works on this extended plow from DeHart? What's the limit that you have to go out on bid instead of just a quote? It's... Uh Seventeen five. Pardon? Seventeen thousand five hundred. Seventeen thousand five hundred. Because you went out for plows last time. Why wasn't this combined with plows? The two plows instead of bid for the plows and approved them, and then tonight for the extended pitches for those plows. That doesn't sound exactly right. Well, there would be quotes. You can't, even though it wasn't the bid process, you have to get two price quotes. So it's like a. If it's under 17 pot. Yeah. So it's not just like you go buy it anywhere. You have to get price quotes and get it from the lowest place. Right. But I'm just curious about it because that should have been done in one shot, basically. Should have gone out to bid, and maybe the bids would have been cheaper if they were combined together instead of splitting it up and then doing it this way. And there's one other thing. In May, I asked about the cost per foot of paving. The figures that were given at that time for $22.11 per running foot. And at that time, the administrator said he did not make up the figures that came from Public Works. I was hoping that maybe during the months that followed May, they would come up with accurate figures that reflect the exact cost per running foot of paving, because it's a heck of a lot more the cost under $22.11 that was quoted by the mayor in the paper that was put out in February. So could you tell me when that's coming up or has it come up already? When has what come up? They were supposed to request it for an accurate figure and they said the figure that they had in this brochure at the time was not made up by administration it was made up by Department of Public Works. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, form it was formulated by the Department of Public Works, yes. So, could you tell me when they're going to come up with a detail to back up the figures of what it actually is? Whether it's $22 or whether it's $39 per running foot. There's a big difference. An awful lot of money is being spent for equipment. There's labor, a lot of labor, in fact. You got a dump truck here for another $175,000. You got other material on it. All this has to be rolled into capital expenditures, depreciation, maintenance factors, insurance, fuel, labor, parking facilities. All this has to be rolled together and come up with a figure, whether it's cost effective or not. It hasn't been done. Sir, in the back. Presidential Lakes. Uh, on this uh, question of vacant properties, uh, I read that the fine is uh, $500 for the first year. Is that correct? Um, register? Uh, yes. It's not a fine, it's to register, right? To register. Yeah. Because uh, I know there's a lot of military people and it seems to be kind of stiff for that. Uh, now, I understand also if they don't. The properties is vacant 
in successive years, there's additional goes up. It increases. It goes up. Yes. So uh, the people are out of state and never return. Who tracks that? And how is that? How is that money ever collected? The the uh, uh, Dave Benedetti, instead of planning and zoning, oversees that program. And if there's legal, if we have to go after somebody legally, it gets referred to my office. And if there's a problem, or if there's a problem, they're issued summonses to appear in municipal court if they don't pay the pay the registration fees for violating. I, if they're out of state, though, how does that work? That mechanism. How does that work? Well, we have to get service of process on the individual quite, or the company, and quite often, a lot of times, it's like a bank or whoever lent money on it. So we uh, we do research on who the registered agents are, and we serve the registered agents with um, you know with the summonses that way. I give that information to Mr. Benedetti. And what department is he in? He's the head of uh, planning zoning. He's, he's the code enforcement officer. He's the director of community Close. development. <laughs> it's all that, right? <laughs> and mo most of these uh, fees, these vacant home fees, are paid for by the mortgage companies. Yeah. Because the mortgage mortgage companies do not want municipal liens on their mortgages, so they on their properties, so they uh, they pay the fees. So uh, he has a record of how much we've collected. That was going to be my next question. Sure. Um, yes. can, yeah. It's can approximately two hundred fifty, two hundred fifty thousand this year, this past year. Now I noticed the uh, 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 Miss Phillips. I saw. A prop well, there's two properties now that became recently vacant. And uh, does this Mr. Benedetti have a list of of new? Uh, does he go out regularly to with a uh, and take down list of properties that are vacant? And does this also include properties that are up for sale? Well, they. It's, it's any any residential property that is vacant. We have code enforcement officers who identify properties, and we also have people who call us or contact us with regard to these properties. When we get a contact from a resident or an email, uh, then our inspectors check the properties uh, to see if they're occupied or not, and then we start the process of sending notices to the owners. Can, I think, can you define vacant? Under the, the vacant house ordinance, if you define vacant, it might help them out a little bit. Well, va va vacant is is a residential property that is unoccupied or for residential purposes. For a period of for time. For a period of time. I don't remember what it is. I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, there's uh, there's going to be about a half a dozen or more houses on uh, my street that are <coughs> vacant for over five years. And most um, of them are probably on the list. And the uh, in the ordinance uh, on the, on our web page, it will give you all the definitions of and the whole criteria of that particular ordinance. Of are they list, are the vacant properties listed on the website? Anywhere? No, we don't do that because uh, and I actually had thought about doing that at one point, but I thought that might encourage uh, individuals to go around and just pick out vacant homes because it is a problem as it stands that people go break into these homes and then steal the copper out of them, which most of them probably have done already. But we don't want to encourage them with giving them the list. Uh, sir, sir, but if you have properties that you've identified that are vacant in your neighborhood, it's just a matter of, of communicating with, with us or Dave Benedetti with the addresses, and we'll have inspectors check them. Now, another uh, question I have here is uh, I get the, this every time I go to this uh, business establishment on Trenton Road opposite the hospital. There's a question on who replaces the light bulbs in those uh, cast iron glow fixtures. Apparently, they, 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 they're not getting, I mean, the light bulb is out, but the, either the county rejects it, and says it's a township, and then the township says it's not our responsibility. And to me, it's kind of like frustrating to hear a, a business owner complain about that little minor issue. So hopefully they can come up with an answer for the, you know, be people, you know, who want that address. Which uh, lights so, so that we can address them? Are we referring to the ones over by 7-Eleven? 
It's in that area, section right, right there. The cast iron have the globe top, right. it's not the ones that are the right. right. They're, they're the township's responsibility for the most part. Some lights are the store owner's responsibility, depending on the store, when it was built. If it was under their plan, approved plan, then it would be theirs. There's a few areas that that occurs. Uh, but that particular problem there resulted in some work that was done on the driveway to one of the businesses there, and we're trying to figure out how to make that connection again. Uh, apparently a wire's broken underground, but we are, we are aware of that and working on that. Uh, another question I had uh, was, uh, I had read uh, Mr. Uh, Tony Trungone's uh, resume, very impressive. But uh, I don't know if uh, the superintendent ever makes a, an appearance to the township council. Occasionally. He does. Because my question to the council is it would be nice if the residents had a summary of that $114 million budget that we have, you know, what's, what it goes for different departments, and also if he is, uh, could be asked to implement a cost-saving analysis with his staff Board of Education. So I'm quite sure there's many opportunities for savings. And another thing is also, I, I notice a lot of times when I come down, I think there's a, on that four mile road, there's a, I guess they use the old, an old building over there. I see a, a lot of times discarded furniture from the schools, and I don't know, I mean, it goes into a dumpster, so I'm just assuming it goes out to, to you know, a trash. I don't think, I don't know if it's being resold to uh, other institutions or not so um miss maldonado is the um school liaison after the meeting if you want to possibly get that question to her she might provide you with a response or be able to get well, you in I the right direction no if if the superintendent appears at the council to give a summary of the budget for the board of education not the budget no I believe he has been here before, at least other superintendents have been, and they do send a board liaison as well. Do they make any kind of uh, budget summary at, at, a, at a board of education meeting? Ms. Maldonado is shaking her head yes. Again, I, I suggest that you discuss that okay. with her if she could provide answers for you. If not, I'm sure she can get you those responses. Okay, and I also had... Uh, I know you've been asked this two times tonight, but I've been asked to come down for the uh, Civic Association for Presidential Lakes, again, about the firehouse and its repair. You know, so they're, uh, they're very concerned about that. That's all the questions I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other. Said, can you, you just got to say your name again. I will. All right. Okay. Terry Maldonado, board liaison, Pemberton Township School. I just want to let everybody know on Friday, on October 30th, we held a pep rally at the high school. And we had a special guest come in and appear, and his name is Ed Smith. He was a graduate of, graduate of 1987 Pemberton Hornet, who is also a professional NFL ball player. <laughs> Mr. Smith was a tight end who earned a Super Bowl ring while playing for the Atlanta Falcons. During his visit to the high school at the pep rally, he presented the Pemberton Township Hornets with a gold football. Oh. So we just want to put that out there that we are doing what we need to do. And as, as far as the superintendent, he is a new superintendent. He's only been in office for four months, so he has not came to you as of yet. But I did speak to him, and he said he'd be more than happy to come out here, say hello to everybody, let everybody know who the, he is here. And as, as far as this gentleman, we, I will do my best to get his questions back to the superintendent for an answer. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other comments, uh, council. Ms. Trublow, would you care to start? Yes. Um, wishing everyone a holiday to come. Uh, as far as Councilwoman Stinney, she's asked that um, sh she sends her regards and she's doing recuperating. And thanks everyone for their well wishes and prayers. And Councilwoman Jackson is also doing very well. So thank you. Mr. Cavitz. Thank you. I sit on the Pemberton Township uh, Veterans Advisory Committee. The Veterans Council is working on the Memorial Day Parade for 2016 and progress is going well. My hometown is Browns Mills, New Jersey, 
and I'm proud to be a 1964 Pemberton Township High School alumni, and I'm proud of the football team and what they're doing today. It, is, it, was a, it was an honor to serve for this short period of time as a Pemberton Township Council member. Thank you very much for that opportunity. Happy Thanksgiving to all, and God bless America. Thank you. Um, and I'd just like to say to uh, Dr. Cathers, um, in your short time on council, you did an uh, excellent job. Thank you. Um, I was um, very impressed. Uh, you conducted extensive research. You worked well with everyone. So uh, best of luck uh, with your future endeavors. And it's been a pleasure to have uh, served with you. Thank you. Um, we have a new, com a new council member coming on board. Um, we look forward to working with, with Jack. Um, and um, Ms. Trueblood already gave you all the update for uh, Letha and uh, Ms. Stinney, so we look forward to having them back at hopefully the December 2nd meeting. Uh, that being said, um, I look forward to seeing you all at the December 2nd meeting, and uh, good night. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second.